Hi, nice to see you again. We are going to see how to use RDNet Measure. Press Tools and then Measure, and the relevant software section will open. First of all, you have to select the audio driver you are working with. In this release, only ASIO drivers are supported. Click on the setting button and select the proper driver as well as the sample rate. From now, all the players and the wave generator will work using the selected audio interface. Now, select the reference channel, which could be a physical input as well as the internal one. I prefer to work with a physical input as reference in order to have a precise indication of the delta time between the reference and the measured signals that, if the internal is selected, do not take into account the latency due to the buffer length of the audio car AG driver. In RDNet measure, there are four players. Each of them can be assigned to a different input. They can work simultaneously if we need to do multiple measurements. To set the input channel of one player, click on the relevant setting button and do the selection. In this case, input 1 of the Dante virtual sound card. At the bottom right, we have the generator with pink noise, white noise or sign tone with selectable frequency. Here the generator output level and here you can select the output channels. They can be 1, 2, 3 and 4, otherwise all, to play the noise in all the outputs available of the audio interface. Clicking on the play button, the generator will start and pause. You can see, in the meters, now we have signals. Work with the output levels and input gain to match, as much as possible, the reference and measured meters in order to visualize the average magnitude plot in the middle of the graph, around 0 dB. Clicking on the small clock on the player, you'll discover the delta delay between the two signals. Click Apply to insert the delay, and the phase and input response plots now will display sensible values. Clicking on the X, the delay setting will be reset. Now, as you can see, the phase plot no longer makes sense. If you have more microphones, you could enable more players, and each of them will have their own delta delay compared to the reference. As soon as you play and pause one player, the relevant plots will appear in the graph. Top right, we have the plus resolution from 1 to 148 of octave, and the integration time from very fast to very slow, meaning 1, 3, 5, 10 and 20 seconds. Lower left, clicking on Save Measure, you can save the measure related at the selected player. Give a proper name and, if is necessary, a custom color. The saved measurements appears and can be shown, hidden, edited and deleted. As soon as you quit the software, all the saved measurements will be lost. If you want to keep your measurements, you can save it in the local drive or in the cloud. Once back in the empty measurement software, you can recall the saved measurement from the cloud, double-clicking on the relevant file or load it from the local drive. It is possible to zoom in a part of the graph by selecting the desired part with the mouse and release the mouse button. Otherwise, you can type directly the axis values. Click here to adapt the graph to the new values and here to reset the zoom status by default. Top left, we have the SPL meter, a really useful function to control the show SPL if there are some restrictions and SPL limitations. To get a proper SPL reading, first of all, you need to calibrate the microphone. We use a common calibrator that generates 94 dB at 1K. Turn on the calibrator and insert the microphone in the proper slot. Click on the small microphone icon to open the calibration settings. Adjust the gain according with the SPL level that you have to measure. 
we usually adjust the gain in such a way that the meter is displayed in the middle of its range, from minus 30 to minus 20 dB full scale. At this point, type the reference calibrator SPL, that is 94 dB, and click Calibrate. Done. As you see, now we read 94 dB SPL, that is the calibrator default output. Do not touch the channel gain anymore to avoid losing the calibration. You can now select the integration time and the desired weight of the SPL measurement. It is also possible to record the time history of your measurement session, the wall show for example, and the value per second will be recorded until we click the rec button again. At this point, a CVS file in the RDNet4 folder has been created which will contain all the data of our SPL measurement. This is the first release of RDNet Measure. We are going to develop some interesting function to connect RDNet Measure with the speakers, applying, for instance, automatically the delay to align our sub, as well as our flonfill, visualize the RTA over the equalizer, and other utilities coming soon. For now, thanks for watching and see you next time.